there is something deeply wrong in the world. In every land, in every civilization, in the depths of every mortal soul, this wrongness is felt in one way or another. For a lucky few, it will never grow beyond a vague sense of unease, a lingering feeling that even in the warmth of a midday sun, a presence lies in the shadows. For others, it will be a constant fear, a voice in the back of their minds that screams and pleads to never tread into certain places and never focus on certain thoughts. They might not fully grasp why these warnings must be followed, only that something terrible awaits them should they fail. For some though, the dark malign cancer eating away at the world and every mortal mind within it is plainly visible. They see it in the dirt of the earth, in the trees that grow from it, in the wood that burns in a hearth, in the dancing shapes cast by the fire, and in the eyes of all those gathered around it. A pure soul will instinctively recoil from this corruption, or seek the means to stamp it out, but few souls within the mortal races are truly pure. There will always be those in which the darkness takes root, festers, and prevails. These are the slaves of darkness, mortals dedicated to the worship of the ruinous powers and the destruction of any who oppose them. Above any other titles they might once have had or now claim, they bear the supreme epithet, Warrior of Chaos. The study of the ruinous powers is a perilous and upsetting endeavor, and no mortal scholar can truly understand the fickle and ever-shifting hierarchy exhibited amongst their dark followers. Anyone corrupted by the Dark Gods might be said to be a warrior of chaos, regardless of if they ever pick up a weapon or not. For by whatever means they might employ, every servant of darkness is dedicated to the hellish enslavement and ultimate extinction of mortal kind. By the time of the reign of Emperor Karl Franz, however, the term Warrior of Chaos is mostly reserved for the barbaric tribes of northern marauders that occupy the unforgiving borderlands between realities surrounding the Chaos Wastes. Since the earliest migrations of humans into the Old World, many tribes have eked out short and brutal lives in the northern wastelands. The Tong, Norskans, Kurgan, and Hung represent the four major peoples of the northern wastes, each separated into a great many lesser tribes and clans. Though fundamentally the same as their southern kin, they have been corrupted for millennia by the radiant energy of chaos that spills outwards from the Northern Pole. The influence of the ruinous powers has led to widespread mutation and social stagnation amongst these tribes, leaving them as little more than primitive savages. Accordingly, they are largely nomadic, unable to build any permanent settlements or great works beyond the occasional shrine. They instead cling to whatever livable patches of land might be found, before moving on, when the dark energies of chaos flow stronger and force them out. Clans might bestow on their chieftains titles such as Jarl or Tsar, but the Northmen have little concept of allegiance beyond the most primitive expressions of blood or kinship. In lieu of having a sense of nationality, a strict hierarchy guided by the concept of strength dominates their limited social structures. Whatever the title, tribes are invariably led by the most powerful warrior or sorcerer. The remaining warriors form an exalted echelon within their society, with slaves and thralls forming the bottom rung, typically expended as cheap labor, consorts, or sacrifices. Though a great diaspora of peoples and cultures make up the warriors of chaos, they are universally bloodthirsty, ruthless, and cruel. War is their natural state and they pursue it relentlessly. They battle mostly amongst themselves, but occasionally unite against the southern realms whenever the power of chaos is ascendant. These latter gatherings are only possible through the will of a great champion who has convinced the tribes to put aside their petty rivalries and disputes. To fight and perish within the armies of chaos under the gaze of the gods is the ultimate honor to the Northmen, and it is the ambition of every warrior to attract the attention of the ruinous powers through deeds of slaughter and conquest. The worship of chaos is the strongest unifying force amongst the northern tribes, often supplanting every other consideration. 
Typically, this worship is directed towards the entire Chaos Pantheon, rather than any single god. For in such harsh lands, it is hardly practical to reject a divine gift or favor, no matter the source. It is not unheard of, however, for certain tribes to devote themselves to a single deity, or even to a particularly powerful demigod or demon. Fallen Chaos Champions, revered ancestors, and other lesser spirits might also be venerated, but ultimately, it is the Chaos Gods to which the highest devotion is given. Korn, the Blood God and Lord of Murder, is worshipped under a thousand different names across the North. His followers are amongst the most numerous, for Korn embodies courage, rage, strength, and hate, the most basic and brutal of sentient emotions. The precepts of Zinch, the Raven God, and the Changer of Ways, by contrast, can be difficult if not impossible for mortal minds to understand. The worship of Zinch is limited mainly to shamans, sorcerers, and other practitioners of the dark arts of magic. But change, hope, destiny, and lies, the domain of the Raven God, are at the heart of any ascension to greatness, and Zinch has many devotees, whether they recognize it or not. Nurgle, the Plague Lord and God of Disease, Decay, Destruction, Death, and Rebirth, is perhaps the least worshipped in the Northern Wastes. He comes to prominence amongst the tribes only during times of great sickness, but his gifts are amongst the most powerful and everlasting. Slanesh, the Dark Prince, and God of Pleasure has likewise found few followers in the North, for the Northmen have little time for luxury and decadence, and rarely indulge themselves in their own desires. A great many other gods are worshipped in the North, and while some are merely aspects of the Great Four, others might be separate entities or other foul things let loose upon the ancient mortal world. The worship and favor of the gods is a vital and glorious part of the Northern Tribes. As these men cling so closely to the perimeter of the realm of chaos itself, to them, the ruinous powers are not abstract concepts, but undeniable entities that mold the clay of human flesh and human minds into whatever grotesque new shapes might please them. The dark gods of chaos demand total and complete devotion from their mortal followers, for the bloodshed and conflict unleashed in their names strengthens their influence over the mortal realms. In return, the ruinous powers offer their greatest champions dark blessings and signs of their favor. Though the risks are terrible, even the smallest chance of gaining the attention of the gods cannot be ignored. A reward from chaos, no matter how trivial, is the first step down a path that can lead to immortality, ultimate power, or ultimate damnation. The gifts of the ruinous powers take many forms, and usually reflect the attitudes of the god that granted them. A warrior may be imbued with terrible strength and fortitude, or their flesh might mutate, limbs changing into gaping mouths or writhing tentacles. A practitioner of the arts of magic might find their eyes opened, sometimes literally, to new possibilities, able to see the world in a way others cannot fathom. Those less fortunate might be disfigured in an instant, beset by a multitude of debilitating mutations. Even the greatest champions of the Dark Gods have been known to devolve into repulsive, gibbering creatures known as Chaos Spawn, though whether this represents the punishment or whimsy of the gods is beyond mortal understanding. Though repulsive, these former men are revered by the followers of Chaos, for every Northman believes it is better to know the most vile existence at the behest of the gods than to have never drawn their notice. The fiercest warriors amongst the Northmen, those who show the greatest promise of earning the favor of Chaos, will be gifted a suit of hell-forged armor by their respected chieftain. These are works of such quality, well beyond their own primitive smiths, instead crafted in the distant forges of Tsar Nagrund, or passed down the generations until their true origins fade into legend. Within the hierarchy of the Northmen's armies, Chaos armor is a clear sign of rank and status, Though these warriors have only just begun their unholy quest. They hone their skills against the enemies of their tribe, or sometimes abandon their kin to gather with similarly clad warriors, forming new warbands 
that prowl the wastes, seeking battle wherever it might come. Should a warrior of chaos excel in this arena, they will invariably feel the call to travel even further north and face the judgments of the gods themselves. They will undertake a dark pilgrimage, braving the unnamed horrors of the northern wastes before entering the realm of chaos, a dimension of pure magic and sorcery. Infinitely worse things dwell here, and any aspiring champion who arrives will find themselves in a place of perpetual slaughter, a tangled landscape of insanity where the dark gods reign supreme. Most who attempt to master this battlefield will die in the attempt, though occasionally the Chaos Gods will acknowledge the strength and spirit of a mortal and mark him as their own. These are the Chosen, and while the gifts bestowed upon them vary greatly, all carry with them the supernatural power and terrible grace of the Dark Gods, marking them as the true nobility of Chaos. The greatest mortal warriors of the Dark Powers are known as Chaos Lords, warriors and chosen transformed into engines of mass destruction by the gifts of their patron god. They marshal to their war hosts not only the northern tribes, but regiments of lesser Chaos Warriors, lured by the promise of greater glories. Yet every follower of Chaos is ultimately on a selfish quest for greater power, and champions are constantly challenging their rivals with the followers of the defeated, incorporated into the army of the victor. In this way, the weakest Chaos Warriors, Chosen, and Lords are routinely culled, and the greater host made stronger. The ultimate gift of the Chaos Gods, however, is demonhood, elevating a mortal follower into a purely magical entity, and in the process granting them true immortality. This moment of apotheosis is sought by all those who walk the path of darkness, but only the most extraordinary among them will ever achieve it. These demon princes are beings of godlike power, but forever bound to the will of their patron god. A particularly successful champion of chaos will find altogether stranger and more terrible things drawn to their presence. Mutated creatures, either those born from the natural world, or abominations fused into being within the realm of chaos, are a common sight within chaos armies. Most often, these consist of giants, warhounds, and sometimes even dragon ogres, one of the most ancient races, and among the first to be wholly enslaved by chaos. Demonic engines too might be harnessed, sentient cannons that belch forth demonic fire, or mobile war shrines piled high with corpses and other offerings. It is known that the ruinous powers originated from a great calamity when something glorious and wonderful died atop the world and unleashed the dark gods in its death throes. While the influence of chaos certainly predates mankind and is felt across every species, it cannot be denied that humanity is uniquely susceptible to its laws, the most eager to pursue the path of damnation. It was from the corrupted tribes of the Northern Wastes that the Warriors of Chaos, as they are known today, were truly born. And when the Dark Gods march against the world, it is always these Northmen that form the foundation of their armies. The Dark Gods value their mortal followers above all others, for it is the ambitions and souls of free-willed creatures that the Ruinous Powers engorge themselves upon. It is for this reason that the ultimate champion of Chaos, one gifted with the blessings of each of the four gods, is always drawn from amongst the warriors of the Northern Wastes. These are the Everchosen, and twelve times they have marshaled the armies of the Northmen Marauders and led them south to bring ruin and glory. Twelve times they have been struck down by the mortal nations they sought to conquer, but now the thirteenth Everchosen has been crowned. A three-eyed king stirs atop his dark throne, and the powers and treasures at his command are enough to eclipse even the greatest of his predecessors. He is equal parts Norsk and warlord and fallen priest, a man of darkness and ruin. Doomed to his enemies, doomed to every people and all the gods invested in them. For when Archeon, Lord of the End Times, rides unto the world, the world will know that the last war has begun.
The Templin Institute investigates the nations, factions, and organizations of alternate worlds. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to join the Templin Institute, consider pledging to our Patreon page. Along with increased security access, you'll be able to vote in polls to determine future topics, get custom wallpaper every week, and receive some other exclusive rewards. 